graphing ellipses. This is the standard form of the equation for an ellipse. We are going to graph an equation for an ellipse without a graphing calculator, then with a graphing calculator, then we'll finish by working some potential test problems. We should notice some things about this equation. The first thing I notice is how this equation is quite similar to the standard form of the equation of a circle. The x minus h quantity squared and y minus k quantity squared are the same for the ellipse as in the circle. Instead of having the r squared constant on the right side of the equation like a circle, the right side of the ellipse standard form is 1. The number that is the radius squared is in effect used to divide both sides of the equation, bringing the number down to the denominator of the other side. But an ellipse does not have a radius, but rather two measures in its place, a, which is half the longest measure of the ellipse, and b, which is half of the smallest measure of the ellipse, from side to side or top to bottom. If an ellipse were a circle, and really a circle is just a special case of an ellipse where a is the same as b, r squared would be brought down to the denominators here. In the standard form, the a is one half of the major axis and is bigger than the b number. If the a underneath the x, it's a horizontally oriented ellipse, sometimes called a horizontal ellipse. If the a is underneath the y, it's a vertical ellipse or a vertically oriented ellipse. For each type of ellipse, it's the h value that moves the ellipse right and left on the coordinate plane. x minus a number moves the ellipse to the right, and x plus a number moves the ellipse to the left. And it's the k value that moves the ellipse up and down on the coordinate plane. y minus a number moves the ellipse upward, and y plus a number moves the ellipse downward. Here's an equation of ellipse with all the numbers filled in. The h is negative 3. So it's x plus 3. The k is 2, so it's y minus 2. The a squared is 81, and the b squared is 25. We're going to graph by solving for y and putting values into a table. Our first step will be to take this x plus 3 quantity squared over 81 and move it over to the right side of the equal sign. And here on the other side, we have to subtract. Next, we need to multiply all the terms by 25 to work towards getting y by itself. The 25 over 25 cancels on the left side, and this is what we have left, just y minus 2 quantity squared on the left side. The next step is taking the square root of both sides of the equation, here shown on the right side of the slide, on the upper portion. Since we took the square root, we have plus or minus on the right side. Now we have just y minus 2 on the left side. All we have to do now is add 2 to both sides of the equation, and we have y by itself. This is a lot of old school work but it's doable with basic algebra operations. We can use the equation to calculate y values for different input values. We can use these points to graph the points on a coordinate plane. And these points uh, trace an ellipse quite nicely. Let's analyze this equation in terms of the, of the h, k, a, and b values. Here's the center of the ellipse marked at negative uh, 3 comma 2. It's this x plus 3 that moves the ellipse 3 units to the left. And it's this, y minus 2, that moves the center of the ellipse 2 units up from the x-axis. Since a squared is 81, a is 9, or half the major axis, so the width of this horizontal ellipse is 2 times 9, or 18 units. And since b squared is 25, b is 5, or half the minor axis, so the height of this horizontal ellipse is 2 times 5, or 10 units. Here's the first of four problems we'll look at today. We're going to solve each problem first by knowledge of conic equations and ellipses, and after that, we'll look at our graphing calculator to help us out. Which of the following answers is an equation for the graphed ellipse after it's been translated down four units? The first thing is to read carefully what we're trying to do, and that is to translate or shift the ellipse down four units. Does that shift involve a change in x or a change in y? Since it's a change in y, we can eliminate the answer choice b that has a change in x, but not a change in y. We can eliminate choice d because there is no change in y for that one either. It's not y plus or minus anything, so it does not move the ellipse up or down. So now we're left to choose between answers a and c. a has y plus 4, and c has y minus 4. If we remember what I emphasized earlier in this lesson, or on the lesson on graphing circles, and even in the introduction to conics, you will know that y plus a number moves an ellipse, circle, or hyperbola downward, so therefore a would be the correct answer. 
We can try the Conix application on the graphing calculator also. This is the Conix menu. Choose Ellipse. Go down to the vertical ellipse, option 2. Note that in this option, the A squared, or the bigger number, is underneath the Y squared. Since A squared is 49, we put in 7 for A. Since B squared is 25, we put in 5 for B. Since the ellipse does not move to the left or the right, we set H at 0. Now comes the hard part. To make the ellipse shift downward, it has to be Y plus a number. And the only way to make it Y plus a number is for K to be a negative number. So it's Y minus a negative number, meaning it ends up as K plus a number. So we put negative 4 here so that it can be possible. Again, it's counterintuitive, but K has to be negative for it to be Y plus a number and shift it downward. We can graph by hitting zoom. We see the zoom conic menu. Then press enter for option 1, zoom conic. It looks like the center does shift down four units, again showing that A is the correct answer. I hope you can see that even to use an application as great as conics, your knowledge of what H and K are is still really important to figure the correct answer even using this application. Here's the next problem. Which conic sections is the equation x minus 5 quantity squared over 25 plus y plus 3 quantity squared over 81 equals 1 represent? We have different denominators under the x and y, and it's x squared and y squared, so we know that it cannot be a parabola, so we cross off d. We see the plus sign between the x and y elements and not a minus sign, so that eliminates the hyperbola from being a possibility. We cross that out as well. So now we're down to an ellipse. We just need to figure out if it's a vertical or horizontal ellipse. The a or larger number under the y squared makes the ellipse vertically oriented, so b is our correct answer. We can also go to our conic menu for an ellipse, even if only to check our answer. We think it's a vertical ellipse, so we make that choice and come to this menu. Since a squared is 81, a is 9, and since b squared is 25, we set b to 5. To determine if it's vertical, both h and k can be set to 0 since the shift of the ellipse makes no difference in the situation. We graph by pressing zoom, then enter for zoom conic, and since we see a vertical ellipse, we have further proof that b is our correct answer. Here's the next problem. The graph of an ellipse is shown below. Its equation is x squared over 9 plus y squared over 1 is equal to 1, and its center is 0 comma 0. What will be the new equation if, if its center were moved to negative 4 comma 5? If we remember that in a horizontal ellipse, the biggest number is underneath the x squared term, this helps us to immediately eliminate answers C and D. Next, to choose between A and B, we need to remember that x plus a number shifts the ellipse to the left, so therefore A has to be correct since it's x plus 4, shifting it 4 units to the left. Going to the conic application, we choose the horizontal ellipse, choice 1. We press enter, then we change A to 3, B to 1, H to negative 4, which makes it x minus 4, and K to 5, which makes it Y minus 5. And here we graphed it. I use zoom conic, then adjust to the window to see the x-axis and the y-axis. We can see the center of the shifted ellipse at the coordinates negative 4, comma 5. Here's the next problem. Determine which of the graphs below best matches the conic section whose equation is x minus 3 quantity squared over 16 plus y minus 2 quantity squared over 36 equals 1. Stop the video and see if you can solve this one. Restart it to see how you did. We can look at the equation and eliminate some answers. The plus sign here means that it's not a hyperbola. A hyperbola has a minus sign here, so we can eliminate answer D. Next, we see the 36 underneath the y squared and the 16 underneath the x squared. Since these numbers are different, we know that it cannot be that special case in ellipse that is a circle, so we eliminate answer A. Finally, we need to choose between answers B and C. If we remember that the bigger number under the y squared makes it a vertical ellipse, that's all we need to know to get this problem correct. We can also go to the conic application, put in 6 for A for square root of 36, and the 4 for B for square root of 16. Now we can graph by going to zoom and press enter for zoom conic. We see that it does in fact match answer B, which we figured earlier. We've worked out four problems. I hope you've learned something from them. This has been Graphing Ellipses.
Thanks for viewing.